everybody so I'm now on day eight of my 10 day uh, quarantine um, despite being fully vaccinated the UK currently doesn't recognize the Rwandan vaccine certificate despite having donated most of the vaccine anyway um, so I have been spending the past 10 days in quarantine and trying to think of things to do to kind of fill my time past the time and one of the things that I have done is um, been playing with the family piano um, now this is this piano next to me belongs to my stepdad Merrick and it belonged to his father before him and it's a really mysterious and strange piano now it doesn't actually have a maker's mark on it it's got the sign Thomas Dawkin on it and that was not actually the manufacturer of the piano that was um, a reseller now I looked this up a long time ago and Thomas Dawkins apparently uh, imported and resold military instruments so they didn't ever make pianos but they took off the maker's mark put their own mark on it, Thomas Dawkins and Company, and then resold the pianos. Which leaves us with a bit of a problem because inside the piano is a serial number. So usually if you've got the serial number of a piano and you've got the make of the piano, then you can easily look up how old the instrument is. And I'll put the link to the piano date calculator below. So say that you had like a Bentley piano, or a Kimball, so long as you've got the maker's name and you've got the um, serial number inside, then you can just look up how old your piano is. But because we've got the serial number but no maker's mark, we can't do that. So the mystery deepens a little bit because on one of the keys, you've got another resale mark, which is W and G Stevens, I think it says. Um, and again, I, I have no idea why that's on there. Um, I did find a WG Stevens on Company's house um, and I followed that to a little shop in London. Um, but the shop, I think, was established in the 1960s. And so I emailed them and I sent them all the information. I said, is this your mark? And they replied saying, no, it's not. And as I have no idea if there's another W.G. Stevens, I can't find one. I don't think that we will ever know quite what the provenance of this piano is. Um, now, we've got a few interesting clues on here. Now, one of the interesting clues is that it is genuine ivory keys. So if you have a modern piano post-1947, when the sale of ivory was banned, um, and, you know, post Second World War, so during the Second World War, ivory became very difficult um, to get. And so if you have plastic keys on a modern piano, it's all one piece. The key top will be all one piece. But if you have genuine ivory, you will always see this little crack along the top. Because ivory keys come in two parts. You've got the stalk and then you've got the pad. Now, another interesting component of this piano is that it's only got 85 keys. So from about 1890 onwards, almost all pianos changed from 85 to 88 keys. However, I did recently see a Bentley piano in Kigali, which was a fairly modern piano, and that only had 85 keys. So they were still being made in England with 85 keys, far later than the 1800s. Now, just looking at this piano, my feel for it, my guess for it, is late 1920s, early 1930s. That's, that's really my feeling for this piano. It doesn't seem worn out enough or heavy enough made to be older than about the 1930s. Now it's also got two dual pedals down here which seem quite sort of common on English made pianos of about the 1930s. This has also got an interesting, it's got block, wooden block pedals 
um, I don't know if you can see this working. There we go. So usually pianos have poles going through them and the pole will come through this piece of metal and out the top. So to see a wooden block is kind of unusual. As also, you can see at the back here, there's chalk tally lines. And I think that is once upon a time, the tuner marking how many times they've tuned the piano. I could be completely wrong, but tuners do often leave little marks inside pianos, um, often with dates in them. Um, so this doesn't have a date, so we don't know when it was last tuned, but perhaps that tells us ha like how many times it was tuned. So I did a bit of sleuthing online. I began with the idea that this was definitely a British made piano because it's got made in England stamped on the string frame. So what I did is I went to the piano age calculator and I started going through all of the British brands of piano, starting with Bentley, because that's the one that I'm most familiar with. And what I did was I started putting in the serial number for this particular piano. So as if this was a Bentley, a repurposed Bentley, 1938, feels a little bit late for this piano, but possibly. Um, and then what I was doing is I was Google imaging to see how similar this piano looked to that particular brand. So I'm trying to find Bentley pianos of the 1930s that looks vaguely similar to this. Now the pedals are very, very similar, but something about Bentley, they've got really interesting designs. Um, they tend to be quite compact pianos and they also really go for rounded casings rather than the sort of square top pianos that we know. Now the one that definitely came in closest for me was called a Challen piano. And I'd never seen a challenge before or heard about them before, but they're an English make. I think they possibly still are. Now, this really does look so similar to the Dawkins that we've got from the pedals at the bottom to the shape of the legs, right down to where the maker's mark is. So where Thomas Dawkins has wiped off the maker's mark and placed his own stamp, that is about a perfect placement. And I can also see from this that it's an 85 key piano in the 1930s. So my instinct was, this is a challenge. And when I put that into the piano age calculator, it comes back with 1932 to 33. And that to me feels about right for this piano. So I, I feel this is probably a challenge. But then I discovered a couple of interesting blogs and posts. There's a really interesting blog called Don't Shoot the Piano Tuner. Um, but he posted this one, which also looks extremely similar. Uh, same kind of pedals, different legs, 85 keys, and a similar sort of backboard. And this is a Pullman piano, which apparently was made in Yorkshire around 1905, early 1900s. And I had never heard of a Pullman piano. And when I look this up on the piano age calculator, it doesn't appear to know of a Pullman piano. So it's saying no brand found. So I don't know. I mean, it looks similar, but not as similar as the Challen did, the 1930s Challen. But I do highly recommend this blog for anybody who's interested in pianos. It's just, it's really good fun. And then I stumbled across this British website, Brooklyn's Pianos Limited. And this one just stopped me because it's a John Brinsmead. And again, this is a piano model that I had never heard of before. And again, it's 1930s, so that feels about right. But it looks so similar, especially below the waist. So below the waist, we've got the same pedals, pretty much, and the legs 
These are the legs that are on our Thomas Dawkins piano and pretty much everything below the waist is the same. Here it's an 85 key piano in the 1930s so again that fits with our piano. And again the maker's mark is just about where Thomas Dawkins could have rubbed it off and placed his own name there. The music stand looks pretty much similar and the backboard on ours has far more um, far more panels on it than this but all in all this piano looks like it uh, the legs are really quite a giveaway um, so something else that caught my eye is that it's got a black backed pin block and this was kind of confusing me with ours because ours have got a black backed pin block However, the rest of the frame is golden and I haven't seen this on any of the other pictures of the insides of English pianos. And also on our piano, it's the same string setup where the bass strings end in the first section. So usually on modern pianos, many pianos, you've got a couple of double bass string sets going up into the start of the midsection. Whereas here, all of the bass strings end in the bass section and then all of the middle section strings are steel strings. So it looks very, very, very similar, although our piano does not have a middle bracket. It has one on either end, left and right, but not one in the middle. So it's not exactly the same, but there are definite distinct similarities here. And when we put the serial number in as a Brinsmead, it comes back with 1900-1905. I feel that for this piano, that's maybe a little bit early. Firstly, because the bottom panel is very, very light. In fact, all of the wood on the casing is very, very light, as in it's not heavy. Um, and older pianos tend to be fairly weighty. Uh, they're fairly solidly made rather than um, as mass produced, sort of easy to carry items. Um, and also the wear and tear inside the piano. It's bad, but it's not horrific. So I don't know. I just, I feel like 1900 is perhaps a little bit early for this particular piano. Um, I, I would definitely feel st more strongly towards the 1930s, towards this style of piano. So I guess with that in mind, then the Challen is still possibly the forerunner there. So that comes in at around 1932 and that feels about right. So perhaps the last little piece to this mystery was found under the bass keys is written in pencil is the number 15142. Now 15142 is about the right length to be a piano serial number, although we've already got our serial number up here in the treble section. 48451. But I wonder, given Thomas Dawkins's background and what he actually did, which was to resell military instruments and also strings that did not actually manufacture pianos, I wonder whether or not this piano is actually made up of more than one piano. So potentially, the string frame came from one manufacturer, possibly a Challen, and the casing came from another manufacturer, which potentially they scribbled the serial number for that in the casing. Now, I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, and I don't think we can ever find out for certain, but it might answer a few questions, such as the strange kind of colouring of the frame itself with the black and the gold and why the outside of the piano looks like one type of piano and the inside of the piano looks like another type of piano. 
But I don't think this is something that we can ever know for sure. And it would also possibly explain why Thomas Dawkins took the manufacturer's name off the casing and put his own branding on that. Because if it's two different pianos put together, then he could no longer sell it as being one brand of piano. So perhaps that's why the maker's brand is missing and why we've got Thomas Dawkins there instead is because it isn't one piano is perhaps he recycled and repurposed a couple of different pianos and put them together so i think that's probably what my guess is going to be and i'd say the majority of the piano is somewhere around the 1930s um yeah but if anybody's got any better guesses if anybody knows anything more if anybody's seen a string frame in these colors made in england before I would love to know more about it, uh, so send me your best guesses.